So I had a really good question to come in on the captive portal and PFSense video that I did. And the question basically was, how does the captive portal actually get connected to the network? And how do the end users actually, you know, communicate with the captive portal? How does that look like? How does that work? And so I did this diagram real quick and uh, it's a, a little bit more uh, in depth than, than just a, a guest Wi-Fi network, for example, but I added some extra things just to show how it may work with, with other things. So um, in this example here, we've got, you know, the, the PFSense firewall running and uh, we've got VLAN 20 and VLAN 30. So 20 is the guest Wi-Fi and 30 is the staff Wi-Fi. And uh, the Wi-Fi controller is running on uh, its, its own um, uh, Wi-Fi management VLAN and uh, that's 10. So um, the, the controller and all the access points will run on VLAN 10. And uh, so they'll be able to uh, talk to each other and you know, the Wi-Fi controller can push out um, you know, updates to the, to the settings and uh, SSIDs, whatever. And um, so basically how this works is um, if you have a phone and your access point is broadcasting a guest Wi-Fi network, uh, let's say with, with no password or anything, you just, it's just open. So you click on that. Uh, and once you connect to the guest Wi-Fi network, um, the access point is putting you onto VLAN 20. Um, and that's just the way in this example that the Wi-Fi controller is set up that, uh, you know, Hey, this guest, SSID that we're broadcasting, anyone connecting to that, put them on VLAN 20. So when the device jumps onto VLAN 20, then um, they're uh, routed to the PFSense uh, firewall where the captive portal is running on VLAN 20. And uh, at that point, depending on how you have things configured, it's either going to, you know, um, have them log in with a username and password or click OK to continue or, you know, get a voucher or whatever. And um, once they are authenticated, then they'll be allowed to go wherever the firewall rules for that interface allow them to go. It may be, you know, the Internet or it could be some local resources, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, also, I wanted to put this on here just so that uh, it was it was clear that that uh, access points and, and uh, the, the Wi-Fi controllers can can um, be set up to broadcast more than just one SSID. I, I see a lot of um, um, setups where, for whatever reason, and sometimes it's security, um, but a lot of times it's not because of security. It's just because they didn't know. Um, a lot of times there will be separate access points, maybe even right next to each other. And one is broadcasting a, you know, open guest network. Anyone can connect to it. And then right next to it is the staff Wi-Fi or, you know, the real Wi-Fi. And uh, that never made any sense to me um, unless it was a super, super critical uh, security uh, uh issue. Uh, I, I understand that. I get that. And, and yes, having two different access points would be an extra layer of security. But um, uh, in most cases, uh, there's really nothing wrong with, with having one access point that has the, the management uh, untagged so that the access point can talk to the controller and then broadcasting, you know, one, two or three um, SSIDs all connected to different VLANs. Okay. So, um, uh, once the device gets on guest and gets approved and is talking to the captive portal, um, then in PF sense, you can sort of track that user. You can, or not really user, but you can track that code. If you're using vouchers, um, if they're signing in with a username and password, then you actually could, uh, monitor the usage. Um, of that user, you can see, you know, when they connected and um, how much data they've used, that type of thing. And uh, PFSense can really, really be uh, uh, heavily configured the way that you want it. You, there's all kinds of uh, things you can do. And we covered a lot of those 
in the uh, the captive portal video that I've already done. So I'm not really going to jump into a lot of these things and explain them, you know, all in depth. But um, all of these settings um, can be can be changed and um, you know sort of customized for the situation that you have, and uh, it's just really really cool, you know. So um, that is that is how. Um, the captive portal interface would actually be connected to the switch or connected to the rest of the network. It can be its own network interface um, or it doesn't have to be, it can just be a VLAN. Um, a lot of times you'll see um, that the connection between the firewall and the switches may be, you know, two or three interfaces trunked together. Um, it, it may not. But uh, this is how a lot of uh, um, captive portals are done. And now that PFSense has multiple zones, you could actually include um, a totally different um, captive portal setup for as many interfaces as you want, which is really cool. Um, so you could do you know, something that's you know, voucher based for guests. And then you could do something that's username and password based for um, everyone that actually has an account. And uh, you can turn that on and off for different interfaces. It's just really, really cool. But uh, no extra hardware is really required to set up the captive portal. Like I said, it can just be done um, in, in uh, software, you know, via, via the VLANs. If, if that's what you want to do. So uh, great question. I appreciate the question. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, and uh, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I try to read those as, uh, as often as I can. And uh, I'll try to respond if I can as well. And um, um, so just keep the comments coming, keep the questions coming and I'll do what I can to, uh, to make videos and, and answer your questions. Thanks for watching.